All right. All right. Snagged you. I love doing this. I was like, oh, I'm going to be coming by the gallery. And I'm like, oh, can you yeah. do a podcast? And you're like, okay. We'll make it happen. <laughs> See, that's the attitude that you have to have, I think, as an artist, right? It is. You have to, if there is something that you can do, do it now is what I've learned. Don't put it off till later. Get it done. <laughs> that's right, right? I mean, yeah. it really is. The trick is to... If you're a professional artist and you're a professional artist, your mother too, and we, we'll go into all that stuff, but as a professional artist, you have to take advantage of every opportunity that you can, even when sometimes it might be uncomfortable or, um, you know, not on your schedule, right? Sure, yeah. And I think also for me, um, it was pretty much eight years ago, I guess now, when I really decided, like, okay, I really want to jump into this and be an artist. Right. Um I knew I had talent because it was, I'm one of the people where my parents were always like, oh, you know, you have talent, you can draw, you can right. do this and that. Right. Um, and so I kind of always just use that as like, um, or almost took it for granted. And so had the mindset of like, oh yeah, I'm good at art. And so right. I can just do art whenever I want. Um, but when I decided to really kind of jump into this, I realized I have a lot of work to do because I started looking at the scene and everybody else who's doing this. And I realized talent alone doesn't really get you where you want to be. Yeah. That is a and very so, true statement. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And that's something you I would think, think it might be too, right? Oh yeah. 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 Well, I'm a great, I can draw great. I can paint. Oh, exactly. Congratulations. Yeah. I write well. Yep. I'm there's... not on the New York bestseller. <laughs> and that probably yeah. I'll never be. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people out there with talent and that was something that I think kind of slapped me in the face at one point because I started doing things and kind of like, starting to put my stuff out there more, which was a big step, um, especially within like the Western art scene, because there's, I mean, there's some giants in the industry. There's some people who are just really, really good. Right. Um, and so the fear can kind of be there of, you know, you put something out there and then you almost like, oh my goodness, should I have put that out there? Is that, was I ready for that? Right. Um, and not to say that anything of that was ever a mistake. I think every um, point of that was a stepping stone to get mm -hmm. somewhere. But once you do that, you have to kind of face the reality of, well, here's the critique here and here's the critique there. Right. Um, and I'm sure you got them. Oh, yeah. From you other people, those, but, but mostly from myself, too, because yeah. it was a lot of it was like, oh, no, like it's it's different when you put your work up against somebody else versus it's been sitting on your easel. You're the only one looking at it right. and you're like, yeah, this is the best painting I've ever done. And then you put it out there and it's like this looks like crap, <laughs> which is true for, I would say the majority of, um, the paintings that I first started doing. And mm. I think that's, that's true for a lot of artists, honestly. Yeah. I think you have self criticism. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that by some of the greats. I won't mention who they are, but I've heard themselves, them say things like that, looking at a great painting going, wow, I don't think I can ever do that. And they're yeah. like one of the greats, right? Oh, yeah. So, but it, I think you need some of that um, humbleness to be able to push to the next level. Yeah. You know, whether you're like a surfer and you go, ah, oh, you know, I'm good at the five foot waves, but these 10 foot waves aren't any I'm right. good. Well, maybe you are. You just haven't accomplished. You haven't done them. Same with painting. I think you just have to keep at it and, um, and never feel like you've reached the best, right? Exactly. I think yeah. that's really critical. It that is. You're always searching to find that next level, whatever that may be. And it may be very, after a long period of time, maybe you're a very small thing. It's like, oh, I got that brushstroke correct. Right. I like that. Or that horse's leg. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. that. And you, and you know animals, and we'll talk about that. So mm -hmm. those kind of things are important. By the way, we've started our podcast, and I have <laughs> Summer Spitzbergen on. <laughs> Yay. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah. So nice. Summer is a very talented artist, too. I was fortunate enough to find this last summer and at the Russell. Yeah. <laughs> we were walking around. I was up at the Russell. I was giving a speech and getting an award. And I was uh, looking at all the art artists. Yep. And I was like, I came across her. I was like, whoa, this is some <laughs> great stuff. And I was like, who is this person? Um, and at that time, you were all of 26, probably. Mm-hmm. And um, I looked at her prices and I was like, I was aghast because they were so <laughs> low. I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to help this girl. <laughs> I needed it. But first, let me buy about 10 paintings and 
I don't um, remember how many paintings I bought. I bought a bunch. It was it was close to that. Yeah, yeah. I, and I gave a lot away to my uh, friends and to my uh, family, and I mean they were just, but you know, but that's a mistake that young artists make. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do it out of necessity because mm -hmm. they go, uh, I got to eat, and I just have to sell them. And well, who's going to pay six hundred? I'll, I'll sell it for seventy five bucks. Sure. And unless somebody comes to you, I think, with an eye or another artist or somebody that understands and goes, you're hurting your own self by, you know, putting them too, too low. Yep. And, you know, and so I said that to you and you took advantage of it and you said, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want those paintings out there that sold for 75 bucks coming back on the market when you're selling, when the same paintings are selling for like, you know, eight hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and you know you're not getting anything from it, and they can sell it, and if they sell it for four hundred or three hundred, they've you know done great, right. and you've done nothing but hurt your own price structure. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's it's really important to do that. Again, you have to have the belief, mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to um, go. You know, maybe I don't eat as much. I don't know yeah. what it is. I mean, it's really easy. Also, I must admit, for me as a dealer to do, say do it. And mm -hmm. then as you as an artist going, I got to make rent. Mm -hmm. So you do have to do what you have to do. I get that. Sure. But you were smart that you followed suit. Yeah. And and that. and that can, it can be hard to swallow at first. Yeah. Um, for me, I think I was, I was mostly just so hungry for, you know, any, any advice from somebody, especially like you, who, who, who knows this stuff and, and has been around, you know, this scene for many years. And so hearing that, it was, you know, it was like, oh man, I'm bummed that he had to see that. But at the same time, it, it just, it, it puts the fire under you as an artist yeah. to, like you said, do whatever you need to do. And one of the other things that stood out to me that you said was, um, if you have to, which I had to create fewer works, right. but put more quality into Correct. them and that will pay dividends in the future. Yep. And so since you had told me that almost a year ago now, I guess coming up on a year, um, that has paid dividends yeah. because I implemented that and put it into practice and my paintings, I could see it. Just the quality of them were were going up. And I could the fact that I could notice it because also when you're an artist, you can really be in like tunnel vision with a painting or right. a group of paintings. And it's like, man, well, am I really improving on this? Am I really going somewhere? Um, but then you take a step back mm. and you really look at what you've been doing while trusting the process to see the the product of that is really cool. Yeah. So I was very grateful for that advice that you gave me. <laughs> you know, I kind of look at it. That's what I'm put on planet Earth to do is to try to answer some of those questions when I can. Mm -hmm. And when I see somebody who has talent, clearly has talent and the drive um, and to at that time, two little kids, now three kids yep. and <laughs> still pushing hard. Yeah. You know, that says to me, you know, I can take a little bit of my time and give what I can do. So cool. um, and by the way, your paintings are still exceptionally affordable. I think they're priced right, but they're exceptionally mm. affordable for anybody who's listening to that. Mm. You know, they're just priced where they should be at this point in time in mm. your career. So, but it sounds like you've been painting now for uh, eight years anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. more seriously painting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let's get into that. Let's go mm -hmm. back to kind of where you grew up. Like, because you yeah. grew up on a ranch, right? I, there was a bit of a gap from when I um, lived on a ranch to when I came back to ranching. Got it. Um, so I was actually born on a ranch. Yeah. I was born in Montana on the Broken O Ranch. My dad was a ranch hand up there and my mom had me in one of the cabins. <laughs> was that <laughs> like, planned the whole it, time or it just she, happened? She kind of says something a little bit different every time, but <laughs> the gist of it, yes, it was planned. Uh, yeah. Looking back, she says she was crazy for doing that. Um, I'm sure. but I'm like, man, that's cool. Like how many people can say that they did that? So yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, my dad was there with the midwife. She was the only one there and, um, there were a few challenges. So he had to go stick a towel in the microwave to heat it up and he set it on fire. And it was just like, it, <laughs> yeah. just the, the classic, like right. could anything else go wrong with this home birth? But yeah, <laughs> so that was, that was on the ranch up there. Um, and by that time I was almost a year, we moved down to Colorado uh, and we didn't live on a ranch down there, but mm -hmm. I was surrounded by a ranching community, and I was on a ranch every chance I could get. Um, and where was that? What, what? Pagosa Springs. Oh, yeah. that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, I know Pagosa Springs. Oh, yeah. It's, it's completely a, wild. And, it is. Yeah. It it is. It's, it's beautiful, gorgeous. too, by the way. It's gorgeous. Super yeah. pretty. And mm -hmm. so would you say that's kind of where you grew up, was in Pagosa Springs? Yep. 
um, up until basically high school. Yeah. Then I moved out to California and uh -huh. met my husband out there. So, yeah. and so when you're growing up in Pagosa, and that's, how big is Pagosa? I mean, it's not very big. It's grown a lot. I know when it, it is. When, right it, when I lived there, it was it was much smaller. I don't remember the population, yeah, but it was. it's a very small city, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not far to Durango, I right. guess, right? Yeah. It's about an hour. Yeah. I actually like it better than Durango in some mm -hmm. weird ways. Yeah. It's got its own little, it's yeah. kind of tucked back there in the yeah, Rockies. Yeah, that's cool. And... So it's that Four Corners area. And so yeah. when did you start riding horses? <laughs> I don't remember the first time I rode a horse. It You're was so it was young. I mean, we we would do trail rides for my birthdays when I was six. Is I guess the farthest back that I can remember of like doing a Rocky Mountain trail ride. Like our family would go out on, um, you know, pack trips in the mountains to spread ashes or something like that. So it was right. just, I I always remember that in in my childhood, and those are my most cherished memories because. Mm. Um, when my parents decided to leave that area, I was the only kid of, I have three other siblings, um, mm -hmm. one of four. Everybody else was like, okay, cool. We'll move to, you know, California, mm -hmm. get a little bit more in the city scene. I was the one who was in the backseat of the car, just bawling my eyes out. I was so sad. I did not want to leave the country. How old were you? Um, seven. Yeah. 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 And so that was, that was a heartache. But, um, once we got out there, so it was a little bit, it was before high school. Um, yeah. got out to California. My cousins actually lived down the street from me and they had a horse trainer right next to them. So they, it was these acre lot properties. Mm -hmm. um, so they had some really nice horse facilities. So of course I jumped on that. So right. I grew up the rest of my childhood riding and I actually showed dressage for a little bit. Oh, wow. and yeah. So yeah. it was different than Western, but it was still in the, in the equestrian community so and your dad was a i mean he was a cowboy at, at yeah. one point right up in montana he, if you right? ask him he'll say ah, i wasn't a cowboy yeah i'm like dad you were up in montana you know working as a ranch hand <laughs> roping calves like you were yeah. but it's funny you you ask people who are a little bit more on the the humble side and they're like yeah i i, I messed around with it a little bit and then sometimes <laughs> other people you'll ask and they'll be like yeah i was the best one i was yeah. know, top hand so it's, it's funny how that can be sometimes so yeah he was he was and, a ranch hand. And so was that in the San Diego area that you were, were growing up then? Um, it was actually central Bakersfield. Oh, and in then Bakersville. moved to San Diego. That's where I met my husband. And then Okay. So yeah. you kind of grew up then at Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a rough town too, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, There's that's some... where a lot of the music came from, right? Glenn mm -hmm. Campbell and those guys. Oh, yeah. All Bakersfield sound. Yep. Yeah. Rough. It can be rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, it is. Yeah. yeah. Do you think any of that rubbed off on you growing up in a town like that? I mean, that's a. Yeah. It, it um, put some resilience in me. Um, my mom has always been super into volleyball. So she pushed us girls into the volleyball scene, um, which I enjoyed. It was cool. It was cool to learn uh, just how to be a good sport and to, you know, be a part of a team. Mm -hmm. But Looking back, I remember like coming home from volleyball practice and like going and sketching and, and or if I should have been doing homework, I was sketching or, or drawing or painting or something. I was mm. never really pushed to like further my artistic abilities within school or anything like that. And so why was that? Do you think? <sighs> there was a lot going on. Um, and also, like I said, my mom's a big volleyball girl. Big yeah, so she girl. was that. She was into that. Yes. But you were the kid that's the kind of the oh, class I was, stars. Yeah, I was I was the kid who was always drawing something. And, you know, the girls who were always drawing horses on their notebooks or something. Right. I, I never grew out of that. <laughs> did you um, compete in anything as far as art? You know, did they have a little... In high school, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. did you win, win those? I did. I, I won. I don't remember what the name of the award was. I still have it in a shoebox somewhere, but... Mm -hmm. um, one of the, um, a politician gave me an award for winning something. It was, again, I have a shoebox full of just little things like that. That and, you won. Yeah. But those yeah. probably did something to you. They you did. Think? They helped nurture me through enough yes. to get me to the point of believing that this is something that I could do yes. in my life yes. long term. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then so... You finish high school, mm -hmm. and then what's the trajectory? I met my husband at 19. Um, we got so you married didn't go at to 20. college. You said, nope, I'm not going to college. I was going to go to an art school in San Diego right before I met my husband. Uh, um, and it, his family has a ranch up in Oregon. Right. Um, and so 
I actually met his family before I met him. And when I found out they had a ranch and needed some help up there, I was like, I'm going up and I'm helping you guys ranch. And so I jumped <laughs> on it. And then. Um, so you, you said, so you were going to go to art school. You met these people yep. that had a cool ranch. Mm-hmm. And you said, yeah, I'll, I'll go work as a, yes. as a ranch hand, yes. basically. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And then. Had you seen Daniel at this point yet? Yeah, I'd seen him a little bit. He claims that I did not um, remember him when he first when we first met, which I don't I don't fully remember everything. There was just a lot going on, right. a lot of people around, and so he always makes fun of me for that. But yeah, we we met, and um, within six months we were more so dating, and then and then six months after that we we decided we wanted to get married yeah so. and you guys are about the same age aren't you, you no we have a pretty good age gap it's almost eight years oh wow uh, yeah he looks so young he yeah he's he got, does yeah he, looks so young. he does but you know what it's good to have that extra age i think because mm-hmm. I, I can say when i met him at the russell i thought wow this guy is all in on his wife's career a hundred percent he is you know he and is. a lot of guys aren't like that right Mm-mm. you know especially mm-hmm. you know if they're have their own business and they're mm-hmm. successful in it. Oh yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you know, yeah, she paints and No, she was like, I'm out here, I'm selling, yep. I'm with her, whatever she needs, oh, yeah. I'm there. He he claims to be my manager, which he yeah. is. <laughs> no, I, I would believe that. Yeah, he he's is. he's a big advocate. He is. That's... If if it weren't for him, and I, I know it sounds kind of like lovey dovey. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. But it, it really is true because he was one of the ones who who's like you have to do this. Like yeah. I wouldn't have gone on this trip if he didn't push me to do it. Yeah. So it is good to have somebody like that. And I count myself blessed to have that. Cause yeah. I, again, I know that not everybody has that. Yeah. So. No, they don't. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're just the opposite. I found, yeah. you know, and you started having a family fairly soon, right? Yep. So yep. how old are your kids now? My oldest is five. Yep. My youngest is almost four and little one is four months, yeah. almost four months. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're doing motherhood and he's got a, oh, yeah. a fairly successful, it sounds like business yep. in Wagyu cattle, right? Yep. Pure Wagyu, Wagyu right? Yep. Full yeah. blood. Yeah. Tell people about that. I know it's the Japanese cattle and all that. Yeah. But so for those that don't. Sure. So Wagyu actually, it literally means Japanese cow. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, if you travel or have ever traveled to Japan, um, which I doubt a whole lot of people have, but they'll serve what's called A5 steak. And right. I'm sure you know what that is. I'm sure a lot of people know. But it's just the most marbled, tender, buttery. delicious, buttery, very expensive. Yeah, it is. It's super <laughs> yeah, expensive. it's it's the most the most expensive steak in the world. Um, and rightly so. It's 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 good. Yeah. It ruined me for steak. <laughs> That's for sure. We gotta send you some. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all in. On that. So how did um, how did that their family get into that? Yeah, um, his dad is actually he's basically a geneticist. So uh-huh. everything that he's done, he wants to have the best of the best. And so what he did before cattle was horses. He got. My husband actually grew up on a ranch, um, a horse ranch down in San Diego, just outside of San Diego and Ramona. Um, and so, yeah, his dad wanted to get horses and he started looking around. Oh, let's do paint horses. And of course, with his um, scientific mind and right. he's got a lot of background in that. He went to school to be a um a scientist and I, I, I don't know all the fancy terms for it, but basically he knows how to get the best genetics and just, mm-hmm. that's his world. He loves that. So he got the best paint horses. This was um, your husband's father. My husband's yeah. father. Yep. They did that down there and uh, raised out a lot of horses. They had, I think at one point they had close to 30 mm. and when they actually moved up to Oregon to, um, when they bought that piece of property, they took some of their horses up there and so I I actually still ride one of the mares who is from San Diego she was I think born in San Diego mm. and moved up there and so yeah yeah I think I've so, seen yeah, you on so, a paying horse before yes, <laughs> <Because> <laughs> yes. yeah so so that's how they they got into Wagyu he said what it what's the breed that is the best that we can do right and that was Wagyu and so and what year um, would have that been how long ago did they start that, that was let's see the first the first two cows he got were not Wagyu. They were um, recip cows, which is a, a host mama mm-hmm. to put a, an embryo in, mm-hmm. which was a red Angus, I think, and a black Angus. Um, and so when we moved up, I actually was, I helped with, um, it's called palpating a cow. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're going to get into some ranchy yeah, no, terminology. Cool. Yeah, um, basically, it. you you know, you 
you put your hand in the cow and and it's the science of it is pretty incredible because that's the whole um you know genetic side of everything is, mm-hmm. is there's so much that goes into it that i think a lot of people don't realize and understand it i had no idea before i got into it and mm-hmm. married into this family um so yeah i was i was one of the ones who helped uh play around with that kind of stuff and just get my hands dirty in it and mm-hmm. and it was it was really cool and so looking back seeing where where they started i came in about um years after that i don't know exactly how many years i came in in 2014 mm-hmm. and so it was a it was a few years later and it was at that point that we had a few heifers mm-hmm. um which are young mama cows right. and um we wanted to start really just growing the herd and so we did and then uh after daniel and i had gotten married in 2015 it was about six years after that that um we sold a steer a few steers to this family who um ended up being our partners and so they they actually had reached out after they got the steer from us and they realized, wow, these people really know what they're doing with genetics, which is all Daniel's father. Not, right. You know, we didn't, we're still learning this stuff and right. it's something that we want to carry on. So we're learning it. Um, they said they know what they're doing. We want, we want to be doing Wagyu. Uh, let's just kind of see where this goes. So they reached out to us and asked to do more business with us. And then it turned out just a lot of things kind of played out and we, we partnered with these people. And so now we have Browsy Acres cattle. Um, up in there's actually a um, the main facility is down in SoCal and then we have our Browsy Acres Oregon Cattle Company up in Oregon and that's where the cows are raised yep that's and how many you know Wagyu cattle do you have yeah right now we have about 300 that's a lot yeah because we we finish out our cows most people do cow calf operation which is um, for most sane people that's the way to go because Mm -hmm. it's a lot less um work in the trenches and it's it can be it can be tough to get started on something like that to take your cow to um or your steers to finish yeah why is that um it's it's a lot of work you're basically raising out from putting either an embryo in a mama cow to um or breeding them Mm -hmm. to when that calf hits the ground raising that cow or or not cow we don't eat cows we eat steers um raising that steer out to finish which can be about three years. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's expensive <laughs> to yeah. start up like that. Yeah. How many years? Yeah. Three. To, um, to raise them. Yeah, about three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is it is it hard to because you kind of I mean you only have three hundred cow. That's a lot for mm-hmm. Wagyu, but you get to know the animal too, right? Yeah. I mean, because you're yeah. really taking care of this individual, yeah, right? That, I mean, that's one of the the really unique takes that we have on our um, ranching business is we we love. All, I mean, obviously. You know, I believe every rancher loves their cows, but we love our cows. Right. <laughs> um, if you actually look at Wagyu in Japan, they are, some people go as far as massaging them. They'll give them beer to drink. They'll do all the stuff right. to, to make sure that they're, they're top quality. And yeah. that's what you Unstressed. have to do. Unstressed. Yep. Yeah. And that's what really creates that good, you know, marbling that a yeah. lot of people are looking for. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you say goodbye. And we say goodbye, which is never easy. I wouldn't think <laughs> it doesn't so. Get, no, it doesn't get easier either the more yeah. you do it. It's it's one of those things that I think people, you know, they think you kind of get numb to it and, and you're just used to it. It's, oh, it's life and death. But for us, it's still, yeah, I get it's it. very emotional. It's incredibly emotional. There's been times where my husband was out on calf watch throughout the night just because mamas are calving, calves are hitting the ground and it's, you know, um, blizzarding, snowing, crazy, freezing temperatures. So we're out in our binoculars right. watching, and and sometimes a cow is born very weak, and so he'll rush out there in the middle of the night with his track, throw the calf in his track, and just you know try to nurse it back to health. And then sometimes they don't make it, right. and that's the only time, one of the only times I ever see my husband cry is when is if something like that happens because we invest so much into these guys, just right. so much of our blood sweat and tears and it's it can be tough yeah, yeah. i would think so mm-hmm. yeah i grew up in a I, I grew up in cattle country i wasn't oh yeah i wasn't a cattle i was yeah. one of the egghead guys but i had, <laughs> I, had I had lots of friends that that's what they did for a living yeah. and i can remember 
you know, those nights that were really bad during when they were calving and it was mm -hmm. cold or whatever. And yep. I mean, you, you know, you had to be vigilant or you could, you know, yeah. you could lose. It's, you did lose. Yeah. And we have, we have lost, like if we go on a trip and we had, you know, someone who before we have our really good hand that we have now, we'd kind of just have somebody come help us out if we were leaving yeah. town. Um, and it's not that it was their fault. It's just, they were more of, you know, the, the babysitter. And so they just didn't know something. And we came back and found out that, or we heard on the phone that it, you know a calf had died or a calf got trampled and it's just it's the most heart wrenching thing. Yeah. So, uh, at one point, my husband threw his hands up and said, "I can't do this anymore. It's it's too emotional." But of yeah. course, you know it's. I get it. That's where we just have to regroup with our <laughs> mindset and say, "No, we're going to do this because it's worth it in the end." And and one of our really big goals is to not change the industry, but at the same time, kind of help change the industry for better. Right. Um, and, you know, just the way that these animals are handled, the way that they're processed, the way that everything is done. We want, you know, everything to just be top notch from yes. the way that we steward our land to the way that we finish these, these cows. We want them, we want them to, to leave happy and they do. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. For not only them, but you as well. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, that's yeah. when you know, Native Americans, you know, take an animal, they say a blessing, mm -hmm. you know, they yep. recognize the gift and all that. Same oh, thing, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, give Absolutely. us, since we've talked about this, even though it's, it's part of your journey, how, <laughs> it is. if somebody wanted to be able to get cattle or get uh, beef from uh -huh. you, can they get it? Is there a website yep. or something? How do they yep. do that? Or, it's browsyacres.com. Um, it's pretty simple. You, we're on social media as well. I think that's one of the biggest platforms that you know people find us yeah. on. Um, but yeah, if you if you just wanted to go to www.browseacres.com, right. um, you can. We have a bit available right now, and then as the years progress, because we're we're into this, um, you know, a few years, and so we're not where we're going to be. Right. We're still getting there, um, and so yeah, we're we're gonna start having more and more, and then we just start doing. Um, chickens too. Yeah. <laughs> so Chicken. we got chickens. <laughs> so chick like as in actual chickens or the eggs or both? Um, we're going to do both. We started yeah. with meat hens and um, now we're going to do. So you need to, eggs. now you have to do that as well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, so where do you find the time <laughs> to yes. paint? Okay. Cause you got, no, yeah. I mean, it's true. It's, I mean, it's the a real best thing, question. It's the, right. Yeah. You've got three kids Yep. and a business that needs help. Uh -huh. And, and so when do you paint? I paint anytime I have a chance and, um, kind of backtracking to when I first had my kids yeah. was that really in a lot of ways like launched me into I can do this because I don't think I really knew my full potential until I had a kid in terms of how much time I actually did have. Yeah, no. <laughs> if right? you don't have kids yet, you do not realize how much time you have. <laughs> um, and that was I that was maybe one of my um, weaknesses was managing time. And so having kids as funny as it sounds, has helped me Focus. like in that area. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I just, I buckled down with a schedule for myself. And then as soon as, you know, my babies were a little bit bigger, they had, I had that ability to create more of a schedule. I got so, my time was, was, you know, better spent. Like mm -hmm. I was, I had a just much sharper goal with what I wanted to do. And I attribute a lot of that to, you know, where I am right now. And I still have so much, you know, a long road to go. Mm. But I I almost kind of look at it as, you know, that was my schooling for, you know, my, my beginning years, the way that I had to kind of buckle down and do that. I wouldn't have done that if I didn't um, have my family. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to any, any mom artists, it's, you know, be encouraged. It's, it, you can do it. Yeah. You absolutely can. And to think that you can't, I think is you're, you're putting, um, you know, it's, I think it's kind of a, a lie in your thoughts of I can't do that because you can. Yeah. Well, and you also have a, the drive. Yeah. You look at yourself as a professional artist, which you are, mm -hmm. and you're going to, you know, that's your job. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think your husband recognizes that too. Yep. Yep. And so when you just at 19, when you go, you guys get married and all that, what do you do as an artist then? Are you making art and trying to get into galleries, selling it your own? What are you, how are you doing and what are you doing? I was mostly trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, as far so as subject matter or? That, so 
the first exposure that I had to art was Western art. Mm -hmm. Um, I took some trips to Santa Fe as a kid and it was, I was just in awe of everything. It's Mm -hmm. like the colors, the landscape. It's just like how art galleries, art galleries galore. Right. Um, this is like, this would be a dream basically, but almost thinking of it as, you know, just a dream. It's not like it could really happen. And so, um, yeah, when I first started, kind of diving into it and realizing, man, I, I, I think I want to be a painter. Like I really want to be a painter and, you know, just getting the encouragement from Daniel, my husband and talking with him about it and just kind of seeing what he thought. I kind of just put it out there and he's like, do it. Let's, let's do whatever it takes. And so, um, so yeah, it looked a lot like getting just everything pulled together in terms of the direction I wanted to go, which was a, it was a long road, but not too long because when people ask me how long I've been painting, it was, and I say about, you know, eight years and five years more, like, you know, that much more intensely just diving into what I really want to do. People say, you know, oh, wow, well, you basically just started. Um, And so, yeah, I I realized, you know, there's a lot of people who have been at this for a long time. And it's, so it's, I'm very, again, I'm just, I'm very blessed that everything worked out the way that mm. it did for me because I know that's not the case for everybody. It's, no. it's it you can be a talent. longer road. You know, the, you. you know, you have the talent. So, I mean, I could <laughs> yeah. see that in your landscapes, especially. Thanks. It's like, Oh, she's already a full, full fledged <laughs> artist. There. And that was one of the things. So when I started looking at it and I realized I didn't have the formal schooling for any of this stuff right. and, I, and I saw that, you know, a lot of people did. Um, I think that that can, a lot of people can take that on as an insecurity right. and, I didn't want that. I, I, I basically told myself, okay, I'm going to be a self-taught painter. Right. Um, there's a lot of them out there. There the, are. Yeah. Like Glenn Dean and yeah. Maynard Dixon. And yeah. To name, <laughs> just a <laughs> few. Name a few. Right? Um, yeah. I looked at it as I have a lot of work to do though, because back to what we were saying towards the beginning, um, you know, there's the talent, but I can see that my work is cut out for me. And so the biggest thing that I did when I started and kind of the road that I took was doing a ton of plein air painting. Mm. Um, that was, did you go to videos or anything like that of people painting or all that? YouTube university. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So how, yeah. Yeah. What did you do as far as the back Um, back end of that? I also, what I did was I told myself, if you're going to do this, you're going to do it right. And you're going to find the techniques that you you want to do and you're going to stick with it no matter what and you're going to look up the artists you know do as much just searching as you can search look at the ones you know pin up the ones that, that you want to to follow in their career and, and really look at and study 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 their paintings um i did that and what i noticed that kept resounding you know a lot of people would say it was if you want to get good at something paint from life mm-hmm. and so that that's what i really took to heart so I, I bought, I saved up some money, bought the best, you know, plein air setup that was available then, which was the Strata easel, got that and got my whole setup and got myself out the door <laughs> and painted any chance I could, which again was, it was tough, you know, with, with kids and all, but again, it just put the fire under me that much more to, to say, um, you know, I'm going to do it no matter what. And so whether it was 25 degrees outside or 103 I got out there on my schedule and I painted my heart out Mm. (laughs) a lot of it was hideous when I first started painting outside I remember the I think the first time I painted outside was next to a stream and it was winter time and I had way too bulky of a setup and I'm walking out to the stream outside of my house because we live in a gorgeous spot and so everywhere is just beautiful Mm -hmm. get to the place start painting I'm just like you know kind of um just figuring it out and at the end of it I about threw my whole setup in the stream because I'm like I'm done I'm not doing this people are insane if they think that this is Mm -hmm. how you do it and so that was my first experience plein air painting and then again I just I plugged along I stuck with it and um I think one of the turning points in my plein air painting career was taking a workshop with Frank Serrano it was a um it was a fun little group it was down in the the Eastern Sierra down by mm-hmm. Bishop and we, uh, we all just, we learned so much and it was, it was really cool. Mm-hmm. That was another, another kind of push for me to, to see because I started painting and learned so much from him because he's one of the best yeah, planar yes. painters. Yeah. Um, and I'm painting with these other people and they're looking over and all of them are amazing. And they're looking over at me saying, 
your stuff is really good. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, and so just the encouragement from that and at the same time, not letting it get to my head because that can be a big mistake, I think, is, um, you know, letting flattery get to your head. Right. Because um, just as easy as, as discouragement can get to your head, mm-hmm. like a discouraging word, I think also a word of flattery can kind yep. of do that too. And so that was something that I, that I said, you know, no matter what, whether it's something good said or something bad said, stay the course on what your goal is. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what. And what was your goal? To be the best that I could possibly be. Yeah. Yeah. I bet that's still your goal, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because it, the same, it, it's still true today. Like it's. Yeah. Nothing's you know, changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a, maybe a, three or four hundred more paintings have gone yeah, by. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so did, yeah. were there other artists that you really liked or emulated or thought were, okay, I can learn from this, either online or in yeah. person? Yeah, you actually have a bit of him in your, yeah? in your gallery here. Um, Bill Anton, I love his work. Oh, I, he's I, so good. Yeah. I, There's a little Bill Anton right I know, there. Yeah, I noticed I mean, that. It's like, and that's plainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell, yeah. No, it's... And did you work with Bill or just watch no, him online I, and listen? I've just watched online. Yeah. Um, I've, again, this whole journey of diving into this has just been incredible because I've just happened, I've, I feel like a lot of the times I've happened to be at the right place at the right time with certain things and just the way that, you know, one door has led to another open door, mm-hmm. meeting people, it's it's just, it's all incredible. I, I love the art world because everybody is, is so... It's actually been very surprising, especially, you know, some of the events that I've been to, people are very encouraging, Mm. which um, when you're someone who doesn't have as much experience as the booth next door, it can be really intimidating. Plus you're isolated on a ranch. Exactly. Yeah. We're, no, we're out there and it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So you can have those thoughts of, you know, oh, it's kind of, you know, kind of scary, but then people approach you and they're like, and you see who they are in their work and, and they they want to help you. Like they, mm-hmm. they don't come at you with with, you know, a word of criticism without help. It's mm-hmm. it's exactly what you did. It's, you know, hey, I see this. What if you did this instead? Right. And I, to me, that's just been really cool. It's, Is there any artists that have done that for you that stick out in your head? Um yeah, there's, and I don't remember all of their names because there's, yeah. there's been quite a few from people that I've, I've done workshops with to um, people who I've been at shows with. It's, again, everybody's just like so kind. And now you've started to get into shows, right? I mean, mm-hmm. so I met you at the Russell. Yeah. Was that one of your first kind of big shows? or It was, yeah. yeah. One of my bigger shows with, I mean, some of the names that were there, I was like, should I be here? Yeah, no, I'm sure, <laughs> but, right? Yeah, yeah. no, it No, you really, definitely held your own. I saw it. it. it I, was, I, I saw everybody's. Thanks. It was, it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. That was really eye-opening to me, again, just to see where the potential, you know, how much potential there is yes. in this. And I thought it was interesting that both – independently my son and myself had picked mm-hmm. your booth out as one to yeah to go. yeah but oh, you got to go see this guy this person did it's uh-huh. a summer person and i'm like yeah already on my list oh man said, yeah, yeah that yeah, was we, we that was <laughs> that was pretty cool that was... yeah well we could see it yeah definitely yeah. can see it and i didn't know who you were right mm-hmm. so it's like it's always exciting for me as a dealer to see somebody who you clearly go oh yeah they have that, you know, they're how old are they? 26? Mm-hmm. And they have the, you know, the ability to, to do it, right? Yeah. And uh, and also, it's, you got to have more than just an ability. You actually have to have the grit to, Yeah, it know. takes some resilience. It, yeah. it really does. Because yeah. I've applied to many shows where I got denied. And I don't hold that against anybody. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I, for me, it might sound weird, but I kind of, I thrive on that. And I'm not a naturally you know, super competitive person, Mm -hmm. but for some reason, you know, helps push you to the goal. It helps push you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it, it makes you, I honestly don't think there's any way to get better because you're putting, you know, you're, you're putting your work out there to have, you know, someone say it's good enough or it's not good enough. And, you know, for what you're going for, because sometimes it can be subjective and different genres and all that and different styles. But, you know, when, when you know what you're going for, I think you can kind of filter through some mm. things and, and say, okay, yeah, like I, I, I'm really going to take that advice to heart and I'm going to run with it. Yeah. 
And you kind of do three different subjects, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of landscapes, animals, and cow exactly. cowboy life, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they're all good, and they're all different. It's really mm -hmm. unique. Um, yeah, I was looking at your, I looked at your website. Let's give you, go, give, give a shout out to your website right now. <laughs> go ahead. My name, summerspitzbergen.com. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Summerspitzbergen.com. Yeah. And um, the the animals, you know, were really terrific. Is Thank that, you. I think there was a bison that you did that was like. Yeah, I did. Really a few. good. And the horses. Yeah. I mean, it was like, oh, this is super strong too. Thank you. know, because I had seen your cowboy. I have some of your cowboy work because mm -hmm. you were part of our Rodeo Day Two Sun yeah, show. We still awesome. have her work and we have two of your landscapes here as, and some other things too. But um, I hadn't really seen the, the animal work. And I was like, wow, that's really quite strong. Thank like you. Really strong. You should apply, actually, I think, to the uh, Jackson Hole uh, Wildlife Show. Uh, do you know about that one? I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a, a really great show. And That'd a be really awesome. wonderful museum. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you definitely could hold your own in there. Okay. I have no doubt. And that's, I mean, yeah, again, how do you find out what you're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. There's no road block, right. roadmap here, right? Mm -hmm. Zero. A lot of roadblocks, but yep. very little roadmap. And mm -hmm. um, I think for a younger artist trying to find one or two good galleries mm -hmm. you know even three if you can it's hard because who's good and you don't know who that is right mm -hmm. talk to your friends who are the artists your artists will tell you generally yeah that's really important i think that's really important if you get if you're getting thinking about going into a gallery mm -hmm. call up the artist and just say yeah mm, what's your experience here right <laughs> so is guy any good or girl any good or you know do i get paid and mm -hmm. you know is it are they you know do they really promote me or you know what what they do yeah and then um and then tr try to get into shows, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to get into these premier shows. Yeah. And, and rightly so, it should be. Absolutely. But, yep. you know, you just keep banging away. I don't know exactly how it happened for the Russell. Do you remember how that you just applied? So a gal had actually reached out to me. Um, she had found me through social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So which and, is also very yeah, important. It is. I, without that, I wouldn't have the connections that I do have. Yes. Yeah. So she reached out, and um, they were they were looking for some you know specific things and people, and I happen to be somebody on her radar, and I'm very grateful to mm. her because that that's just it's been a very excellent experience. Everything about it is just they take amazing care of their artists um, who are participating and the communication and all that. It's right. Just, it's really cool. It's, yeah. I I mean I was just so impressed. Yeah. With the Russell, I really was. It's. Uh, it's just, uh, and that's usually, I think, around, now it's the third week in August. Are you doing it this mm -hmm. year again? Yep. When is it, exactly? It's, so like the 19th, oh man, 20, it's 21st? the weekend of my birthday, which is the, my birthday is the 21st, so I, I believe it's the 23rd is the, that weekend. Yeah, yeah. so that would be the 2021st. It's Indian yeah. Market, <laughs> exactly. Actually, oh, yeah, okay. Which is the problem, otherwise I'd be there again, oh, but it's yeah. right at the Indian Market for me. Yeah. It's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> do it a week early, a week later. <laughs> right. But, um. But I encourage people to go to that. It's so fun. Show. It's oh, so fun. Just such a fun time. Yeah, I, I text a bunch of people after that. You have to get to this show. It's, it's yeah, cool. it's beautiful there. Yeah, Great Falls yeah. is wonderful. The museum's wonderful. Yeah, Their director's wonderful. They're all. It's just a mm -hmm. you know a top rated thing. It is. And so you got in there. And what what do you think you learned? That was kind of your first big show. Would you say? Yeah, the my first. You know, I just hadn't really had the. I wouldn't say time because I feel like. If you really want to do something, you'll make the time to do it. But for me, it kind of felt like that was the first time that I had to do, you know, to be able to set up a booth and right. do all that um, with with the family. Just yeah, I know. You had two little boys running yeah. around in the booth the whole time. Your husband. <laughs> Everybody knew about the little boys yeah. who were running around. Yeah. Um, well, it's hard. I mean, they're little boys, right? Yeah. They were, <laughs> they did pretty good. I think the cool thing, and that was the other really cool thing was everybody was very gracious with that. And it's not like the kids you know, ever went and knocked paintings off of. The walls or anything. Yeah. Um, my son did spill my turpentine, which was a one-time experience. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll do it again. My son broke yeah. a big, beautiful pot one time when he oh, was three oh on goodness. purpose. In, in the gallery? Uh, no, it was, uh, I was doing okay. a hotel show. Okay. Right. That's wow. you know, That's... Uh, you know, and he just decided he was mad, and he knew that would get my attention, and it did. Oh my goodness! Yep, that sounds <laughs> so, uh, about kids, right. Kids will do that, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, yeah, I didn't kill him. My wife, my <laughs> wife was there to intercede. <laughs> Good thing for the wives. Yes. So, but, and you met me and, yeah. uh, but not just me, there was probably lots of other people. Yeah. Um, there was, um, Tobias Sawyer was there. I mm. got to meet him. There were a few, um, just really awesome cowboy artists that I hadn't 
I'd seen just through, you know, their work, but I hadn't right. met them. And then, um, yeah, there was even the people who were around my booth, they were, um, the, the man across from me, I'm not recalling his full name right now, but he was one of the ones who stepped over to my booth and I could tell he had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, yeah, you know, and I asked him for some advice on something. He said, if you did this color to right here, this would, you know, just make the whole painting so much better. And it's just little things like that, that you wouldn't mm. really think of by yourself. And so having, having, um, other artists who mm -hmm. you value with, you know, their opinion. Um, I think that can be just so valuable. And did have. you go and look at other artists too, to, to, mm -hmm. to try to learn, okay, how did they lay oh, this yeah. down? What's I remember the there? first, the first time I had seen some paintings that I had admired through magazines when I saw them in person, it kind of brought a whole new dimension of just, right. again, possibilities because you see it and you're like, I never would have seen that breaststroke in a picture and I can see that that's something that I can do, which right. is really cool because you just, again, you don't know until you see the stuff in person right. and you're able to, I think for me, I like I can look at a painting and I can see the texture and um, I think just something that I personally have, I can go and I can basically like copy what they did with the texture. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's something that helps me a lot is seeing art in person. Yeah. And but I can look at your work and see you've got an original voice too. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a summer. You yeah. Know, it's not somebody else trying to do whatever. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's something that I've tried to do is, um, not, not ever, you know, necessarily copy what somebody's doing with their, you know, their painting, but mm -hmm. take a technique, you know? Right. Well, and they then, all do. Yeah. Everyone, every yeah. artist does that. Right. I, mean, I can't tell you how many artists come in. I know they're an artist the minute I see them because yeah. they're not looking at the painting head on. They're at the side uh, yes. <laughs> looking at, you know, how did they lay that down? Exactly. And I mean, it's just like, yeah. oh, so you paint, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you know? Yeah. Yep. Well, you, you look, you got the technique and nothing yeah. else. It's just, you know. It's so cool. And, and that's all good artists. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I've seen every great artist come in here and go, hmm. Oh, that's that? cool. Yeah, it doesn't matter who they are because yeah. they want to learn. They want to get better or they see something like, Oh, yeah. How did that, how, I, you know, what did they do right. to do that, right? Yeah. I don't paint, but my son paints, so he has a better sense of mm -hmm. those things. But I can watch and learn. And, you know, I go more personally, like gut um, aesthetics. I know mm -hmm. when a painting works. And sometimes yeah. I may not even be able to articulate why, Yeah. you know, but I know. Right. You know, there, there's an energy that it just in me. And I also know when it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Like really quickly. It's like. Yep. <laughs> There's one artist that we were looking at, and I like, yeah, but the horse has got three <laughs> legs. Where's the other horse leg? You know? Yeah, and I know. I don't, what you know mean. I don't know if they know, you know, but right. everyone, and that's all I can see. Yeah, um, and it, I guarantee you that artist was in tunnel vision. They didn't. Yeah, they know. They back. don't see it. Yeah, and it can be even great artists. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a burning house painting once where he didn't put the feet in. <laughs> <laughs> there were stirrups, but there was no feet. <laughs> you know? It yeah. was a beautiful little painting. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't. Hilarious. It, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't. Anatomy is good to know. <laughs> yeah, right. And do you go and look at, I mean, you must probably look at your animals maybe a little yes. differently. Oh, than, yes. Right. And yeah. what is that you do when you're doing um, it? For me, so much of it, for instance, if I'm painting a, painting a horse, um, so much of it is the bone structure and the muscle. Mm. If I don't have that down, it just, it's off to me. And, and I think one of the things that I can't stand, like if in my painting, at least if, if I do a horse this way, where, where the horses, I, for some reason, I love masculine jaws and horses where mm. they're just, you know, bulky and, and almost like a jug head, but not quite. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like narrow noses on a horse. Like it's, mm -hmm. um, my mother-in-law, she loves them. It's so funny. She loves like the really feminine looking petite, like right. narrow nose, um, you know, thinner, longer ears or whatever. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like, ah, oh, no, I, I like a horse that looks like it can, it can drag a calf or, you know, right. and then not to say <laughs> there's some scrawny horses that can't drag calves, but, um, yeah, it's the, my mare that I ride the most, um, she's got those big jaws. And so whenever I'm out working with her, I'll, I'll just kind of look at her and different angles and, and even like feeling, it's kind of crazy, but just feeling the horse and just like yeah, knowing man. where everything is. And Makes complete sense. Yeah. Just because right. if, again, like you said, if, if something's off, especially while painting a horse, you don't have something down, it's going to always look off. 
and it's it's the most awful thing especially like for me if i oh, if i, I see bet. that i'm like oh it it kind of makes you when you look at it you you almost get sideways and you like kind of yeah. tense up a little bit and you're like something's not right <laughs> it's funny how that well, i'm sure you know innately too because you look mm-hmm. at oh, something not right here right because you're around horses probably daily right yes. you ride every day pretty much yeah pretty even much. now even after having just had a kid yeah <laughs> i rode up until six months pregnant and um it's my third and so yeah. you know I, I started just feeling things a lot sooner and like whoo i'm getting tired yeah. winded a lot sooner and right. so I stopped at six months and <laughs> got back in the saddle after I think seven weeks. And so, yeah, I bet yeah. you were just could hardly wait. Oh, it was it was the worst thing to have to not ride. Yeah, it's like I actually I snuck out and did a ride. My husband didn't know. I think he was I think he was out of town, and then my ranch hand. Um, he wasn't going to say something. He he said something after I said something to my husband. I was like, well, you're not going to like it, but I rode. It was like it was just under the mark, you know after I had a baby where you're supposed to be, you know, doing a whole lot of activity just because right. you get exhausted. Right. And so I was like, yeah, yeah I had to, yeah, I couldn't yeah. not. Uh-huh. And everything was fine. Yeah, but he was course. like, Sam, you've got to take it easy so that you can be, <laughs> you know, active later. And so yeah. it's just, yeah, I, it's, it's a therapy for sure. Yeah. yeah I would think between that and painting all yeah. the things that you just yeah. feel and you probably feel guilty if you don't paint. I don't oh, it's, it. it's bad. Yeah. yeah. I it's totally. Understand. It's almost like, you know, it is. It's it's mom's therapy time. Yeah. It it helps. It's just the way that we're wired, I guess. It helps set the world straight. It helps. If I haven't painted, especially in a few weeks, which a few weeks is the longest stretch I've I've done since I started more seriously painting, and that was only because of babies and stuff. Right. Um, I could feel it. It just feels off. You don't feel. Yeah. It's like exercise. It is. And you feel grumpy. You're like, oh, it's just yeah. you know, you have to have that artistic release as an artist yeah and i think you just feel negative about yourself right mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah i mean i feel that way when i don't write yeah so, yeah you know, exactly it's, like, it's ah, very I, very similar i could have written why didn't i do you know even if i'm tired you know come mm-hmm. on 250 words how hard is that sure <laughs> some yeah. days it's hard <laughs> depending <laughs> oh yeah how drained writer's you block yeah 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 i don't really have that but uh, uh-huh. to, but it's it's just i just once you start, it's easy. It's like, you know, you go to the yeah. gym, maybe you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. But once you start doing your thing, it's like, oh, God, yeah, I feel better. Yeah, it feels you know. way better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you also have joined the Cow uh, Girls of America. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. That's a new organization. Uh-huh. And um, so they had, they've had two shows or one? They've had a few. Um, again, I've been out of a few things since um, baby kid, came. Yeah. But yeah, I went ahead and applied to the the cowgirl gathering show that the that they joined in on. It's I didn't realize how big it was. I mean, I always kind of knew, mm-hmm. but I mean, and it was also the 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 world finals of the PBR, and so it was just everything that's happening there at the stockyards. Yeah. So it was a fun experience. Yeah, that's really yeah. fun. And then of course I'm paint horse lady, and it was right there at the paint horse headquarters association or association headquarters. Did you go over and? Do anything with them or say hi? Or... Yeah. So the, the show was actually in the headquarters right there. Of the paint horse? Yeah. Did you bring a paint horse, I hope? for the... <laughs> I so wanted to. I actually asked my husband. I was like, do you think we can bring Flicka? That's my horse's name. And right. he's like, logistically, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but how about paintings of Flicka? <laughs> yeah. the paint. Um, I actually didn't paint her. I painted her sister. She's. We have her sister mayor on the ranch yeah. with us um and i painted her for the quick draw yeah so that was really cool yeah. like oh painting my paint horses at the headquarters right really cool so what's up next for you yeah there's really just going to the next level yeah <laughs> um personally my personal goals how do you think you get there Putting my nose down and getting to work. Yeah, painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doing the job. There, you can't replace just painting. Yeah, doing the work. And, yeah, and and really, you know, taking everything that you've learned accumulatively, like just everything, keeping that in mind with every every painting that you do, and trusting the process. And that's the cool thing that you can only learn until you start doing it mm-hmm. is, you know, what is the process that works best for my paintings? Where have I had the best outcomes? Mm-hmm. And it was really cool when you saw my booth, you, the one that stood out to you the most was the painting that I had the most fun painting. Mm. And 
my husband said it. He was like, Sam, look it. You know, he has the eye. He can see what you're most passionate about. Right. He can see what really came through, right. you know, when you painted with heart. And not to say that, you know, the paintings that I try to put out there, you know, I, I, try, I hope that they're always the ones that, that I paint with passion with. But there's sometimes those ones where it's like, you know, from start to finish, everything about it was just so fun. Yeah. And not to say that there's not, you know, little struggles along the way. And there's always, you always hit that stage in a painting mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, how do I push through this? Right. So, yeah, trusting the process and sticking with it no matter what. But also letting yourself have some creative freedom mm -hmm. is really important yeah. for me. Yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing something with orphans too. What's yeah. that? Tell us about that. Yeah, so we, um, my husband and I have traveled um, in some different places throughout the world. And um, we're with a group and it's our church. And basically what we do is we just go and take care of orphans and widows. That's what really is heavy on our heart. Um, and so where we go is actually kind of crazy. People are like, why would you guys go there? Um, we go to areas that are a little bit more war torn. Um, and so the recent place that I actually went before, I guess it was five years ago now. Oh my goodness. Time is flying. Um, we went to Kashmir in the Northern part of India. Mm. It's a smaller little nation, but basically they're, um, they're known as a nation of orphans and widows. And mm. so we, we go in and, and we bring loads of rice and just things that we take so much for granted for just basic food and, mm -hmm. and clothes. And like we got there and these, these little kids with these huge brown eyes are looking at you and you look down and it's, you know, take note, it's 30 degrees, it's winter time. Mm -hmm. They don't have shoes or they're wearing little sandals and it's like, this is everywhere in this country. Right. And so, um, that's, you know, that's our heart is we're like, man, we just, we want to go to the places where there's more of this going on mm. and kind of we like to get in the trenches mm -hmm. so my husband's actually going to japan this next month um because we're kind of doing a little base thing out there where it'll be kind of a headquarters mm -hmm. for launching out to go in to so some, some of these places, places. will yeah. you go with him or not this trip yeah um, you got three kids i'll stay back with one. the kiddos yeah. and then we actually we're gonna be in oh man what month august i believe um beginning of august we'll be going out to armenia Wow. Yeah. And you'll go, and again, it's just, you go and help whatever can be helped. When, yep, whatever. Yeah. We like to do recons. We just, we go in, and, you know, thankfully, we've been able to have a lot of connections politically and just meet people who are either, you know, governors of the land or, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, presidents, and we, we ask them, we're like, listen, where are the neediest parts of your country? Because, you know, they, they see... I think they see a lot of missions people come through mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of put a guard up and that's understandable. Um, and so we basically, we come in and that's why we like to, you know, do that. It's, mm. you know, where are the places where a lot of people don't like to go? Where are the places where we can come and be the biggest help? Because we realize how valuable our time is, our you know time and resource. And right. so we want to go in and just get stuff done right? and make sure that, you know, how can we be the biggest help? And so it's primarily your time and energy, but I assume money must flow oh, yeah. that way too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of through the church, your church that you do this? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. It's it's cool. And it's for widows and orphans primarily? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. our focus. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful that you do that. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, you get more, fun. right? I mean, you get, in some respects, it's you, the kindness that you give, the empathy that comes, gives yeah. you more it does. than them. It, and and oh, it seems yeah. it's hard to believe, but... Yeah. In some respects, I think that is true, right? Yep. Yeah. So you'll oh, yeah. that's going to be kind of a lifelong mm -hmm. mission, you think, for you guys? Yeah, I think so. Um, we're always going to have, you know, our our home base. We've we've always said it's very important just for our family and our kids yeah, to have their home base. Yeah. Um, and then I I always see myself, you know, being in the the Western art world. But it is cool to kind of to take the artistic abilities, you know, worldwide and just kind of see like. You know, yeah, I would think when you're there, things. you want to you you yeah. maybe bring your watercolors yeah. or your you know drawing and the little things. plein air setup and post I'm sure up. you must want to do that or do do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we had gone to Kashmir, it's right up against the Himalayas, mm. and so I didn't take my easel and I was kicking myself. It's like, man, 
these mountains are right here in front of me and I don't have my easel, but <laughs> next, time. <laughs> next time. I did take some pictures of the kiddos just because we work a lot with them and yeah. I did some portraits of them and yeah. it was it was fun. That's really yeah. fun. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's cool. So what else would you like to share as we kind of wrap this up? Anything else? Maybe w w words to people that are maybe in your kind of in your yeah. you know, self-taught that are really wanting to do it, but maybe yeah, haven't? Yeah, I'd, I'd say... I think one of the biggest things that, that I've learned is there's no shortcuts to greatness and not that I've achieved greatness. I just, I, I truly believe and feel that you can't get there unless you go through it and unless you, you work things out and, and you do things, you know, to the absolute best of your ability and to not try to ride on you know, anything else or, or anyone else, but, but to really like dive into what you're going for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, shoot for the stars. Like right. there's there, I continually, you know, benchmark check myself of just making sure am, am I aiming, you know, where am I shooting for the stars here? Or do I have a, a ceiling that's a little bit too short for me? Mm -hmm. like, I'd, I'm never going to stop looking at the best of the best artwork and having that as my goal, mm. you know, for what I'm going for. Right. Because again, it can be subjective, but pick who, you know, who you love and don't copy them, <laughs> right. but strive for that same excellence, I yeah. would say. Because that, that, I guess that's what I mean yeah. when, when you look at someone who you admire and love their work. Yeah, like a Bill look, Anton. Yeah, look at the excellence of it. Look at the, you know, the techniques or, you know, how 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 did he get there it, it right. wasn't it wasn't easy i'm sure and it wasn't no no, no he, and, he pushed hard yeah it still pushes hard. yeah and i think yeah. that's um it can be easy to look at you know the different artists of today who are the elite and say you know ah well they i'm sure they had it easy they were always that good or, <laughs> or oh they probably knew somebody right. and this and right. that it's like you don't know that you yeah. don't you know in fact i can almost assure you they didn't yeah i i guarantee that <laughs> the ones that try to make it on who they know yeah they usually yeah. don't last yeah it, it time is the ally of truth <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so so that's what i what i strive for is yeah. if i'm going to do it i want to do it right so that i can you know i people can look at my work and they can see the work that was put into it yeah. and that was something that um your son one of the paintings that he loved, it was a, um, a snowy waterscape with, you know, snow banks, mm -hmm. um, a snowy river. He looked at it and he pointed out the things that I had taken years to work on and develop. And maybe someone with not as educated of an eye, they probably wouldn't have seen that. The fact that he saw what I was going for, mm. that can be so, it, it was so minor, mm. but he pointed it out because of his background in, yeah. in that I was so thankful like little things like that are just such words of confirmation for me and, yeah. and just so encouraging so that comes you know that that shows me okay that stick with that yeah so, yeah yep stick with it keep yep. doing it yep summer wonderful having you on I'm so honored and it's nice to have your work in the gallery too that's an honor as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that one. it's very cool so very cool to be and here. They can see, you can see your work either on your website. Oh, you also have Instagram and Facebook, yeah. right? I, yep. I just went to Instagram. I don't know if they just yeah. do the book. I'm probably more active on Instagram. I should be more active on Facebook, but yeah. And what's Facebook. the and what's the uh, name on the Instagram account? It's summer.paints. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was different. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so go follow her so she can get up to like 20,000. Absolutely. <laughs> Bring in the followers. <laughs> you can see what it looks like to live on a ranch yeah, in Oregon. It's, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> with three little kiddos yes. and painting yes. yeah well thank you for coming by and i want to go you got some art in the car don't you yeah i do yeah we gotta yeah. go look at that oh that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> sweet all right